Welcome to the 700 Club. The massive snowstorm that's buried much of the Midwest is pushing into the Northeast today. The snow could pile as high as 12 inches in wow. parts of the country. That cold wave is not limited to the United States either. Here's reporter Jennifer Wishon. January's frigid fingers have much of the nation in a tight grip. The Northeast awoke to a fresh dusting of snow where temperatures are expected to hover around freezing into the weekend. In New England, residents are preparing for single digit temperatures Saturday morning. And it's been cold, cold, cold. The extreme cold is making some everyday tasks like pumping gas painful. And in some cases, it's been deadly with cases of hypothermia and exposure reported, along with vehicle crashes due to ice and snow. It's a little sloppy out there, and you just really have to watch for all the uh, drivers who don't realize it's wintertime in Cleveland. They do the same thing they do every year, pretend as if they don't know it's going to snow and how to drive in it. In parts of the south, it's what motorists can't see that's causing problems. Black ice is making travel treacherous. In Oregon, this man had trouble standing as winds gusted at 100 miles per hour. And the wind chill in North Dakota created conditions that felt like 52 degrees below zero this week. The story is the same in Europe. Residents in remote rural areas are having a hard time digging out, and those who can get out are facing travel delays due to single digit temperatures and snow. But not everyone is complaining. I love the conditions. I like slipping on the roads. I, I like running in the snow. The dog loves it, so it's good. How long can we expect the deep freeze to last? According to AccuWeather, the plains will start feeling some relief next week with near normal temperatures in the 30s and 40s. That's like a heat wave in some regions. But forecasters warn winter is far from over. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Well, it's the worst winter in 25 years, and uh, I, I tell you, Terry, it looks like the only one that's going to um, get anything out of this is the people who saw natural gas and coal. Yeah, and uh, salt. For the, <laughs> and salt, salt for the, road. for the roads. That's exactly right. But it, it, we haven't felt it the same way here as as parts of the the north have. You know, the north. Well, and the it was northeast. supposed to snow last night. I'm grateful it didn't. Uh, yes. The temperature was warm enough it didn't, but. Uh, and I'm grateful that Florida didn't get the cold snap. Yes. It, was, it didn't get the freeze. So uh, grateful there's for some, Florida. There's I would have liked things. a few flurries here. But <laughs> <laughs> there's some good things in all of this. But if you're in the Northeast or in the yeah. Midwest, to the degree you can stay inside, please do. Uh, it's very dangerous to be out in this kind of cold. Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories from the CBN newsroom. Lee? Gordon, North Korea is one of the most brutal and repressive countries in the world for Christians. But that didn't stop a young American Christian from walking into North Korea on Christmas Eve. 28-year-old Robert Park was on a mission to preach Christianity and bring attention to that country's notorious human rights record. He was arrested at the border, and his fate is unknown. George Thomas has more. The concentration camps must be liberated. Until this is Robert Park in his own words. You know, I, I'm a Christian, and in the Bible it says that we must love the we must love the poor and the needy. We must love them more than ourselves. Days before the crossing, the 28-year-old native of Arizona told the Reuters news agency that he was willing to lay down his life to share the gospel with the North Korean people. I'm willing to die, actually, from the perspective of liberating North Korea, if I die, it's better. Okay? I mean, I mean personally, it's, you know, it's gruesome and it's hard for me to think about being executed and being defeated. But as a Christian, I have, to, I have to deny those feelings. On Christmas Eve, Park entered North Korea by crossing the frozen Tumen River from China. He was carrying with him a lengthy letter for the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-il, urging him to accept God's love and to step down from power. Park said he was doing this to raise global attention about the suffering of the North Korean people. A nation that runs concentration camps, a nation that uh, kills men, women, and children without uh, any kind of uh, uh, restraint can never be trusted. There are an estimated 200,000 political prisoners languishing in half a dozen or so large concentration camps. Tens of thousands of them are reportedly Christians. 30,000 North Koreans are believed to be practicing Christianity in hiding. According to eyewitnesses, Park was carrying a Bible and shouting, God loves you and God bless you, as he made the crossing. He was immediately detained by North Korean guards. His excursion into the North and the gospel message he was carrying is sure to upset North Korean authorities. Proclaiming Christianity is a direct attack on the Kim Jong-il regime because everyone, of course, in North Korea 
is raised to worship Kim Jong Il. Kim Jong Il is their god, and they, and uh, Christianity is is condemned and can result in being executed. Park told Reuters that he didn't want the U.S. government to get him out until the North Korean people are free. My demand is that I do not want to be released. I do not want President Obama to come and try to pay for me to come out. But I want North Korean people to be free. The concentration camps must be liberated. Until they're liberated, I don't want to come out. In Seoul, South Korea, and in his hometown of Tucson, Arizona, family and friends are holding prayer vigils for him. Many of those who have watched his interview online admire him for his courage and passion. He's a really amazing man of God and compassionate heart and uh, really loves people and really loves God. Park can only hope and pray now for some compassion from North Korean authorities. Crossing illegally into the country carries a three-year prison term. Some activists fear he could be accused of trying to use Christianity to undermine the regime, a crime that carries the death penalty. George Thomas, CBN News. Not everyone agrees with Park's actions. Reverend Carl Moeller of Open Doors USA says Park knew he was breaking the law when he went into North Korea, and he warns that Park's incursion will likely provoke even harsher persecution there. Mueller doubts U.S. officials will make great efforts to win Park's release. A federal court has dismissed a lawsuit by an atheist soldier. Army specialist Dustin Chalker had claimed his rights were violated because he had to go to events where prayers were said. But the judge ruled Chalker failed to exhaust alternatives before he filed his lawsuit. Chalker evidently sued without taking his complaint up the chain of command. Chalker plans to appeal the ruling to the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. New Jersey is now the third state in three months to reject same-sex marriage. State senators voted down a bill Thursday to legalize it. Gay rights advocates say they will fight back in court. They're hoping to file a lawsuit to get New Jersey's Supreme Court to rule on the issue. The vote was the latest setback for gay marriage supporters nationally. Last month, New York state senators also voted against same-sex marriage. And in November, Maine voters overturned a new gay marriage law in their state. Five states, though, now recognize same-sex marriage. Traditional marriage supporters are outraged over a California judge's decision to broadcast the Proposition 8 trial on YouTube. San Francisco federal judge Von Walker made the last-minute decision based on what he calls an experimental basis. The hearing involves two same-sex couples who argue the voter-backed pro-traditional marriage legislation violates the U.S. Constitution. Gay rights couples Gay rights groups, rather, say the coverage will help expose the American public to the arguments by both sides, but opponents argue that it could jeopardize the safety of the witnesses. These proponents and supporters and donors have in the past been subject to harassment, intimidation, even death threats. Taking a high-profile case like this, in which the constitutional rights of supporters of Prop 8 are threatened, and putting it on television will undoubtedly increase threats and possible harm to witnesses and people involved in the case. The court ordinarily bans television, radio, and photography from the courtroom. Walker is the first federal trial judge to exercise the experimental program. The way we watch television could change soon. You could be watching in 3D. Right now, the 3D movie Avatar is a massive hit in theaters. 3D gives the effect of the third dimension of depth to a picture, although it requires special glasses. Major TV producers are working to bring 3D to the home. Many industry leaders call it the next big thing. But not everyone agrees. But starting this June, some channels will already be in 3D. And Gordon executives and producers say more is on the way. More is on the way on this one. And uh, will it be the next big thing? I guess that's up to us as consumers. Uh, I know Sony, uh, it's a huge corporation, has, has literally bet its future on 3D. They're, they're pushing hard on all fronts for both uh, 3D televisions, uh, 3D um, DVD players, and then uh, 3D entertainment systems. So uh, it, it's, it's coming, and, and now the issue is do we want it? Yeah. Um, because, you know, when you go to a 3D movie theater, if you take the glasses off, it all looks weird. Is that what's going to happen to our TVs? Well, you can you can set it either way. Uh, I see. Will be the the answer to that. So if you if you don't want the 3D, you can set it to to normal. 
uh, if you do. And I tell you, those glasses give me a headache, so yeah. stock up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On your pain reliever of choice, if you're going to do that. One more thing laying around the living room. <laughs> Up next, a plea for help from the pulpit and an instant answer from the pew. I ask people to pray about her need of a kidney. I knew God spoke to me at that exact moment and said, You're the one. The miracle that made this man and this woman a perfect match. That's coming up. Coming up later. With his wife in a coma and doctors giving up hope. So she has brain injury, she has brain trauma. One husband begins his own fight for life. I'm saying, oh no, you don't. This is for arms. Arms that push, lift, and carry. Arms that open doors, hold tight as they can, and know when to let go. This is for arms that are too important to hide. Curves works for your arms, your legs, and your heart. Call today. Our 30-minute circuit works every major muscle group, from biceps and triceps to glutes and quads, with a trainer to teach and motivate. You can burn up to 500 calories every workout. This is for arms and everything they hold dear. Curves work. Join Curves now and get 30 days free. And find out how you can help improve the lives of 1 million women at Curves.com. Monday. From humble beginnings. I've had times that I ran camera. To a global ministry. We have probably seen more people come to the Lord through CBN than any other organization in the world. Celebrate 50 years of CBN. But it, it wasn't me, it was God. And get a glimpse of the next 50. The amazing thing to me is being on a webcast and get a phone call from Pakistan. Monday on the 700 Club. Kimberly Smith helped to raise 28 children as a single mother. Then the time came when she needed help, and she received it from a total stranger. Here's reporter Ephraim Graham with the story of a match made in heaven. Tab Jason, how are you? Jason Evans visits Kimberly Smith once a week and talks to her on the phone every day. But the Youngstown, Ohio residents were strangers four months ago. I have a great mom. But I really feel like I gained another mother through this, you know, and I, we have a special connection. There is an unbreakable bond between the 29 year old husband and father of three and the 54 year old single mother who's adopted four children and helped to raise 28 foster children. That miracle connection began in August at Victory Christian Center Church when the pastor made this unusual altar call. Kimberly needs a kidney transplant. Remembering the day, Pastor David Thomas says one thing prompted his call for a kidney for Kimberly, who has attended his church for 30 years. It, really, desperation. Kimberly was at a point of desperation. We needed to get the news out every way that we could. I had to get a transplant, or that was it. My immediate family, my sister, couldn't donate because she's a diabetic, and my brother has high blood pressure. So, I only have two siblings. Kimberly also had advanced diabetes and high blood pressure, which caused her kidneys to fail. Her situation was, was very uh, serious. See, actually, if you have high blood pressure or diabetes, you want to preserve as much kidney function as you can. In three years, her doctor at the Cleveland Clinic performed 38 surgical procedures to administer dialysis and placed her on a priority list for a kidney donor in Cleveland, Ohio, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There are a number of patients actually who die on the waiting list and never receive kidneys. So, um, and Kimberly knew that that could have been her, her fate. Kimberly's faith would not allow her to accept that fate. I told God I wanted him to heal me. I didn't care how he did it, just as long as he did it. I didn't care if it was instantaneously or a transplant or whatever he had to do. I was willing to, you know, go through with it. The answer to her prayer came at her pastor's August altar call. 
There may be somebody in this service, there may be somebody watching on the internet, and uh, God's going to speak to you. I ask people to pray about her need of a kidney. Now, when I asked them to pray, obviously, um, I did not know if it would be someone in the congregation, but I did say it may be someone right here. When Pastor Thomas told his congregation about Kimberly's need for a kidney, Jason Evans was sitting here near the back of the church. He had never met her, but he felt compelled to offer his. It took my breath away almost. I was like, whoa, that's, that's big. But then as soon as I thought about it, I felt like lightning just hit me. And I was like, I knew God spoke to me at that exact moment and said, you're the one. After the initial shock, Jason told his wife, then went to be tested to be sure he was a match and finally shared the news with Kimberly when the results came back a month later. He told me then that he was going to give me a kidney. And when he told me that, I just, I was so overwhelmed, I started crying. Everybody's always asking me, well, that's a big sacrifice to give. And I, I really don't, I never have felt the entire time, I didn't really feel like it was that big a sacrifice. Surgeons performed the successful transplant in November. But the story of how the recipient and donor came together has them asking questions, even months later. I thought to myself, I mean, what if he had not been at church on that particular Sunday when the pastor actually, um, you know, announced the fact that Kimberly was in need of a kidney? Uh, it kind of makes you think that there was divine intervention here in terms of um, the fact that Jason was there right at the right time. Kimberly and Jason are now on a quick road to recovery and building a lifetime friendship. When God speaks to you like that, you know that you're supposed to do it and you, you don't really feel like it's a sacrifice. You feel like you're just doing what you're supposed to do. I think he is amazing. I just, I love him for what he has done for me. But I think it goes far beyond that. He's a selfless person and that didn't just happen. He's had to be like that for a long time. And, uh, we have a bond for life. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, lots of miracles in that story. But here's the verse that comes to mind. No greater love, no greater love. You can actually lay down your body part for someone else to say, while I am still living, I will donate for you. Because a uh, miracle of miracles, we match. Uh, that is an amazing story. Well, on average, 70 people a day receive an organ transplant, but the sad news is that 17 people are dying every day waiting for transplants that never come. If you'd like more information on how to become an organ, organ donor, uh, I want to let everybody know I'm one. Uh, I filled it out on my driver's license, and that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, so in the event of my death, um, um, my body parts can help other people live. And what a wonderful thing that is. Uh, and I want to encourage everyone, do that. Uh, you know, just as a basic step, um, you're, you're not going to need them anymore. Uh, <laughs> and there's a new body waiting for you. Uh, so you, you can let your organs live on in other people. And it's amazing what they can harvest from your body. They'll really help people uh, and give them a hope and a future. So if you want more information, log on to CBN.com. Terry? Well, next, a Hollywood writer and director who went from dealing drugs to making movies. He'll share his real-life redemption story and talk about his latest movie when we come back. Ready in the thing? Going to Dr. Robertson in three, two... On December 3rd, 2009... Pat Robertson entered the studio to update his landmark work, The Secret Kingdom, to help people live abundant lives amid today's challenges. I want to talk to you today about The Secret Kingdom. What is The Secret Kingdom? The Secret Kingdom, Volume 1, available January 18th. Sarah Palin has captured our attention and electrified America. Her new book, Going Rogue in American Life, is a runaway national bestseller. Newsmax.com has an incredible offer for you. Get Sarah Palin's new book, Going Rogue, for just $4.97. That's a savings of $24 off the cover price. Plus, you'll get four months of award-winning Newsmax magazine absolutely free. Newsmax magazine covers the tough stories the media just won't report and has great writers like Bill O'Reilly, Dick Morris, Mike Reagan, Dr. Laura, and Ben Stein. 
Dick Morris calls Newsmax his favorite magazine, a must-read for every American. Get Sarah Palin's new book, Going Rogue, at an incredible price. For just $4.97, save $24. Plus, get award-winning Newsmax magazine absolutely free. This is a no-risk, no-lose offer, but we have a limited number of copies. This offer won't last long, so you must act today. Call 800-NEWSMAX. 800-NEWSMAX. Call today. Well, you may remember the movie Woman Thou Art Loosed, based on the book by T.D. Jakes. Well, now the writer of the screenplay for that movie has a new film out. It's called Preacher's Kid. You lied to me. I'm going on the road with a gospel play. I mean, it's just like church daddy singing, praising, and praising. You're not going to win Help me! The Preacher's Kid is a new heart-touching film about redemption. The man behind the film, Stan Foster, has a remarkable redemption story of his own. Stan grew up in a rough neighborhood. In elementary school, he started selling drugs. Later, he scored well on an IQ test and his life turned around. Then while taking pre-law in college, his path took a different turn and he moved to LA. Without taking a single acting or film class, Stan started a successful Hollywood career. He's acted, written scripts, and now is both producer and director of his new film, The Preacher's Kid. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Stan Foster. Stan, it is great to have <laughs> Thank you, you here. For that. This is pretty exciting, but before we talk about Preacher's Kid, tell me a little bit about your own childhood, because you're not a Preacher's Kid. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I, I'm from uh, Youngstown, Ohio, and uh, it was a pretty tough town to grow up in, and got involved in a lot of things I shouldn't have, and, and um, somehow I got to Hollywood. Still don't know how it happened. Well, so if, if you grew up in a family where church wasn't the core of, of what you were raised with, how did you come to know Christ? Did you know who Jesus was? Or? I, I was I, my, my household was filled with prayer, and, and my mother was very, uh, a very faith-filled woman. Respectful and, of the and things absolutely, of God, yeah. Absolutely, and she sent me to church. <laughs> but, you know, it's... Um, but you, you get caught up in outside influences, your friends and the wrong people and the wrong things. and and uh, But somehow, what does it bring up a child in the way he should go? Yes. And, and yes. Uh, so I wound up uh, finding a different way. So tell me about that because here you are. You're, you're living a lifestyle that's not following the Lord. No. And how did God finally get your attention and say, Stan, I'm over here, you know? I know it sounds cliche, but I was watching the 700 Club one day. No way. Uh, ben Kinchlow was on, and he was the first guy I ever saw make prayer cool. It was, he was like, brother, you know, just pray like this and just do this and do that. And, and something in your heart. And Funny how God brings you together. Absolutely. At just the right that, moment. With uh, and and so it's it's full circle to come here, and I'm kind of in awe of the whole set of the 700 Club, and I'm like, wow, this is. I remember being a kid just watching the show and and praying while watching the show. So here you are. You hear Ben Kenslow say, if you want to talk to God, just he's right here in front of you. Pray. And just in plain, simple English language, I was just, okay, God, if you're real, if this is really real, then show me. And, and what did God do? You know, I, I, it was the first time. I, I'd seen people praying in tongues before, and, uh, you know, I was kind of skeptical of it. I didn't really believe it. Sure. And, and I'm like, come on now, is this, you know, this You're making that and, up, yeah. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. just acting, it's play acting. And, and I just said, okay, if it's, if it's real, I want to know. I, I was in the house by myself in Columbus, Ohio, in college, and, and all of a sudden I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and I started speaking in tongues, and it scared me at first, yeah. and then I, I felt this peace, and from then on, I knew that I knew mm -hmm. that I knew. So God made himself real to you in a very unique way when you prayed that prayer. Now you're in college, and what were, were you pre-law? I was pre-law, pre -law. and, uh, and I, I was kind of frustrated the direction I was going. I didn't know what, what I wanted to do, but it wasn't law. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> Which law. Which I am in. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I prayed again, and God just spoke to me and said, you know, go to California. And I went, and I'd never acted before. I never had any training, never took a class. Uh, and I went out, and in a few years, I'm on a TV series. That is so amazing. Do you know how few people that happens to? 
it sounds made up, but it's yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you go out to California, God gives you favor. Yes. I mean, it wasn't like you didn't have to, to push and, and be there. And yes, it, it, uh, there were times I didn't eat. Uh, it, was, it was tough, but uh, it, I just sort of, I knew that God sent me there, and I, if I just persevered, it was going to happen, and uh, doors just opened. Yeah. And you got a television series. Got a TV series, Tour of Duty, changed my life. It, wow. It absolutely changed my life. And then how did you go from that to Preacher's Kid? Tell me about how God moved uh, you through well, that. Well, uh, I, was, I was on the TV series, and again, I found myself in this place of not being happy, not mm -hmm. being satisfied. Something didn't feel right, and I wanted to, I wanted to write. And uh, it's interesting, I'd written some scripts, and, and I remember an executive in the studio saying that the writing was not very good. Yeah. And... Uh, Years later, it's ironic, I, I, God gave me a word at church, and, he, and there was a, a prophet that came to my church, and he said, thus saith the Lord, there's a writer in you. And wow. it was like, it just yeah. kind of knocked me off my feet. And years later, I wrote Woman Thou Art Loose, and that same studio executive uh, I met with uh, had seen Woman yeah. Thou Art Loose and said, wow. You know, sometimes we just have to believe that the gift and the desire that God's placed in our heart are going to come together as we use them. Yes. Because I think many people are discouraged in Hollywood and, well, probably in other jobs as well when, when it's not there right away. And you had to hone your skill. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I got a little success early on, like within just a few weeks, and then I didn't work for like two or three years. Wow. And, and during those years, it was, it was the training. Mm -hmm. it, was the, uh, it was the honing of the skills. I, I, would, I would learn in the most unorthodox way, but, yeah. but God uh, absolutely was my teacher. A lot of character building in those years, too, of, I bet you. You know, not eating <laughs> builds character. It really does. And I wouldn't trade any of yeah. it. So tell me about Preacher's Kid. Preacher's Kid, uh, wow, it, it was inspired by me meeting a real PK, and I, I had no idea about the whole Had never stigma. even thought about it. Never yeah. thought about it, and, uh, and once I found out, I thought, wow, what a wonderful backdrop. So it's, it's really the story of the prodigal daughter, and it's, it's set, I use the device of the Preacher's Kid, and also I put in the backdrop of these gospel plays, like Tyler Perry's plays. Yes. And... Uh, and this girl goes away from home thinking she's missing something, and she gets more than she's bargained for. Wow. And so is that what we're going to watch in the clip that we've I, got? Yes. We're going to see, uh, I forget the first clip, but I think that's it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's, we're going to take a look at a scene from Preacher's Kid. Here it is. My daddy's a pastor. Mm -hmm, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> so is it true what they say about you all? What? I mean, I hear PK is a, like, the biggest freaks ever. Excuse I'm, I'm, you. <laughs> no disrespect. I mean, I just hear PKs are really messed up. And there's the pressure of being perfect. We can't make mistakes like everybody else. Would it be a mistake for you to spend the night with me? No. I mean, yes. Oh. <laughs> the beginning of the trauma, right? Can I just say, yeah. that, that actress, uh, it's her first movie. Uh, really? Her name is Latoya Luckett. She used to be in Destiny's Child. She was one of the original members with Beyonce. And uh, she had a smaller role in the film, and I put her in the lead role without reading her for the lead, just on a hunch, and she's amazing. She's wonderful. Wow, you took a hunch on something that big. You know, I just, this is my first time directing, and I just sort of followed what was in my heart uh, throughout, and it just worked out so well. Did you like what you did? I mean, are, you, are we going to see more I from you? I am addicted. <laughs> <laughs> Once you've directed, uh, you know, the, yeah. I've acted, written, produced, uh, and go to my website if you can, stanfoster.com. You'll see everything we're doing, stage plays. And, and uh, Preacher's Kid out at the end of this theaters, month? Theaters, uh, uh, January 29th. Uh, okay. everywhere in the country, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Grown men are crying after watching this movie. Wow. It's really an emotional film, wow. and it is a good message, and uh, the theme is you can always come back home. Stay true. Thank you very Lord much. Stand. I appreciate it. Great Thank to you. have you here. God bless Thanks. you. Don't forget, Preacher's Kid opens in theaters January 29th. Go to CBS.com to find a theater near you where you can enjoy it. Gordon? Well, still ahead, a car wreck leaves a husband with a very different wife. She was swollen up. She was bruised. They had shaved off, you know, most of her hair. 
and she had this big thing sticking out of the top of her skull to monitor her brain. This is the woman that I had been joined to for well over 20 years. Hear the threat he made to save her life later on today's 700 Club. We're living in one of the most trying of times since the Great Depression. Government bailouts, record high unemployment, housing foreclosures, a falling dollar. Our government spending trillions of dollars and counting. A debt that will burden our children and grandchildren for years to come. Hi, I'm Scott Winters. I've been a gold investor and a gold line client for many years. Higher inflation and a struggling economy could be with us for a long time, making it difficult to know where to invest today. If you're like me, you want to diversify your portfolio. That's why I own gold. Gold prices have tripled over the past eight years. Not many investments competed with that type of performance in the same period. Call Goldline, a company with more than half a billion dollars in annual sales, helping investors like you and me acquire gold for nearly 50 years. Call Goldline now. Ask for your free investor's kit and learn why gold should be a part of your future and your family's future. the cookie from the cookie jar. Yes, me, and I lost 105 pounds. I stole the cookies from the cookie jar. <laughs> yes, me, and I lost 115 pounds in six months. If you want to lose up to 15 pounds a month, get Smart for Life cookies. Doctors develop Smart for Life cookies with extracts from natural ingredients like fruits, vegetables, wheat, and dairy. Smart cookie meals replace breakfast and lunch so you can save $1,200 a year on food. Just pop a cookie. It'll save you a fortune over other plans. Eat cookies, lose weight. It's that simple. <laughs> Order now and get a free week of cookies plus free UPS delivery. Lose weight, save money. An average of $1,200 a year on food. Get smart. Call 1-800-209-0368. That's 1-800-209-0368. Welcome back to the 700 Club. An Israeli professor has deciphered the most ancient Hebrew inscription ever discovered. Professor Gershon Galil of the University of Hira in Israel says it validates both the Bible and Israel's ancient history. Professor Galil told CBN News it proves the kingdom of David did exist. This inscription is from the 10th century B.C., about 800 years before the Dead Sea Scrolls, and it was written in ink on that pottery shard and found a year and a half ago near the Elah Valley where David killed Goliath. The text itself is not biblical, but it expresses a biblical theme. It contains an extra exhortation to worship the Lord, to address the needs of the slave, widow, orphan, and stranger, and to plead for the infant, poor, and widow. Parts of Guatemala are suffering from extreme drought and famine. The lack of rain caused the crops to fail in the so-called dry corridor, this leaves them with little to no food. CBN's Operation Blessing has been working in the region since last fall to help these families. The aid organization has distributed more than 40,000 pounds of food to more than 1,000 families. Operation Blessing has also set up a community feeding program in one of the hardest hit villages. These children used to find food at a local dump, but with the famine, no one's throwing away scraps. Operation Blessing is providing more than 100 of these little ones with three meals a day now. It provides them with school tutoring and after school programs. You can find out more about the work of Operation Blessing at OB.org. Gordon and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. This is for arms. Arms that push, lift, and carry. Arms that open doors, hold tight as they can, and know when to let go. This is for arms that are too important to hide. Curves works for your arms, your legs, and your heart. Call today. Our 30-minute circuit works every major muscle group, from biceps and triceps to glutes and quads, with a trainer to teach and motivate. You can burn up to 500 calories every workout. This is for arms and everything they hold dear. Curves work. 
Join Curves now and get 30 days free. And find out how you can help improve the lives of 1 million women at Curves.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Joyce Brothers. Those of us who are independent and live alone shouldn't do so without having emergency protection. And for reliability and peace of mind, I recommend Alert USA. With Alert USA, if you ever need assistance, just press your pendant to be connected to an operator who can summon help to your home 24 hours a day. I've been giving advice for many years, and I believe Alert USA provides the best emergency support and value for your dollar. Call now for a free brochure. Monday. From humble beginnings. I've had times that I ran camera. To a global ministry. We have probably seen more people come to the Lord through CBN than any other organization in the world. Celebrate 50 years of CBN. But it, it wasn't me, it was God. And get a glimpse of the next 50. The amazing thing to me is being on a webcast and get a phone call from Pakistan. Monday on the 700 Club. More than 250,000 Holocaust survivors live in Israel today, and they struggle to get by on a small pension. Many of them can't even afford basic things like food and medicine. And here's a look at what CBN's Operation Blessing Israel is doing to help. All the pictures from the past are still before my eyes. If it were possible to photograph what is before my eyes, you would have pictures that are clearer than any movie. The billionaires. We were constantly beaten by the whips. They also had terrible dogs. I was beaten by a dog here. I remember crying because I was away from my mother. So one of the men screamed at me and said that if I don't shut up, he will kill me. They survived one of history's greatest genocides, only to face hunger, sickness, and poverty at the end of their lives. 250,000 Holocaust survivors live in Israel today. Almost half of them live below the poverty line, most of them from the former Soviet Union. When they were able to come, they were much older. Many of them were, were not able to work, and they weren't able to speak the language. So not only did they come with nothing, but when they arrived here, they weren't able to provide for themselves. To meet this need, Operation Blessing Israel is helping survivors with food, medical care, and home visits. When the Germans fled, they bombed us a lot. In one bombing, we ran outside and my husband was killed right away. I fell into a basement with my child, who died next. Sarah spent three days buried alive under a pile of debris. She never fully recovered from her injuries, and today it's hard for her to get out of bed. Most of her small pension goes to medicine, so there's not much left for food. Now, once a month, she makes a list, and a team from Operation Blessing buys her groceries. This fear is present with me throughout all of my life. I cannot say for sure what I'm afraid of. Erica was just a child when she was sent to Terezin. More than 60 years later, she still relives her time at the camp. I'm afraid to stay alone at home. I'm scared when I hear a doorbell ring. I'm afraid of who might be on the other side. Erica is no longer able to work. So every month, a team from Operation Blessing takes her shopping. I was told that I can choose more than $100 worth of food. It is a lot of money. Now I have enough meat for at least a month. We think that it's really important that we let them go to the shops themselves and choose what they want. And that's linked to their identity, to their dignity, and to giving them respect. For Erica, the visits are about more than just food. She looks forward to spending time with her new friends. It is a great help. 
when I know that there is someone far away in America who thinks about me and helps me. The time in the ghetto affected my physical health from the lack of food and different diseases. Today, Elena suffers from poor eyesight and a bad back that makes it hard for her to clean her apartment. So once a week, a volunteer from Operation Blessing comes to help with the housework. The fact that people come to help me do the cleaning is a very big help to me. I'm very grateful for that. Elena also got the new glasses she needed, but couldn't afford to buy. Now that I received the glasses, my life has changed. I feel more free and the tension is gone. I feel very good about Operation Blessing. They're doing a very big thing, pleasing God. I returned from the concentration camp with chronic pleurisy in both lungs. I also have a terrible allergy that gives me a constant cough. Like many other survivors, Frida has more than her share of health problems. I'm not working now, and I receive only a small pension. I can't afford the special food I need because of my allergy. Today, Frida can buy the kind of food she needs, and Operation Blessing pays the bill. In the past, my children would open my empty refrigerator, and they would get worried about me. Now, when they ask me, how are you, I tell them, everything is okay. <laughs> Today, Operation Blessing is helping 70 Holocaust survivors throughout Israel. And that number is about to triple. We would like to reach 200 people by the end of next year. They know that we're Christian and they welcome us. There's something that happens and I think it's reconciliation, isn't it? And uh, it's certainly what Jesus calls us to. Thank you. We are not many of us left alive. I don't know how to thank you for remembering us. I want to say that what you are giving me is the greatest help that I have ever received. Well, we're kicking off 2010 with something really wonderful. It's been a dream of mine for over four years. Can we start an Operation Blessing Israel? We've been doing humanitarian work in Israel for decades, but to get formally recognized, to have an organization, to have full-time staff, it's amazing. We've got uh, Russian translators, Christians, who are able to translate to help those people in need. And uh, our signature verse, if you bless Israel, if you bless the descendants of, of Abraham, God in turn will bless you. I will bless those who bless you. So Operation Blessing Israel, if you want to be a part of it, all you have to do is call 1-800-759-0700. You can also log on to CBN.com. All you have to say is, I want to give a designated gift for humanitarian aid to Israel. I want to bless Israel. And uh, you can write to us, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Just put on your check on the memo line, Operation Blessing Israel or Israel Relief. Uh, either one will work, and uh, just tell the uh, phone counselor, um, you know, I just want to reach out and help Israel. How much is it to help one of those Holocaust survivors? It's roughly $100 a month. Uh, that's the average. So if you want to make a special gift of $100 to help them, that would be great. And don't be worried. We're, we're reaching out while we have one arm around the Israelis. We're reaching out another arm to the Palestinians. Uh, we're doing relief work in Gaza. Uh, we've got plans for relief work into the West Bank. All of that is very difficult. Uh, it is dangerous. I don't want to minimize that. But we're doing that. And a third group, and they sometimes say, well, we're the forgotten group in Israel. The Christians who live in Israel, uh, particularly those around Bethlehem and Nazareth, uh, have huge unemployment issues, poverty issues. Uh, we're reaching out with hands of love and compassion to them. Uh, I also have a dream to start another one in Cairo, Egypt, so uh, be in prayer for that. Uh, we need to show the Middle East the love of Jesus Christ. They've seen the warfare. Uh, they've seen what religion can do in terms of warfare, and, and we need to show them some love. So if you want to reach out with hands of love and compassion, call us right now, 1-800-759-0700. Terry, what's next? Well, when we come back, we're going to be praying for you and for your specific needs, so stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. 
Hi, this is Terry Mewson. I have the privilege of traveling around the world seeing the life-changing things CBN partners make possible. On a recent trip to South Africa, I saw firsthand the incredible difference you're making in orphans' lives. Here at home and across the nations, you are bringing the help people so desperately need. Just like you did for Sadhana and her family when their home in Orissa, India was set on fire, just because they're Christians. They and 300 other families found food, clothing, love, and refuge in a camp for persecuted Christians you made possible. Your monthly gift makes it possible to heal the sick, feed the hungry, preach the gospel, and so much more. Please watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. Imagine lifting a life out of despair and filling it with hope. That's what you do every day as CBN Partners, and it only happens because you were there. Bill Ferris was at work when he got a call that nobody wants to get. His family had been in a car accident. His kids were fine, but his wife Robin was not expected to survive. It was just a normal routine day, and I was going to my daughter's school to pick her up from preschool to bring her home. But on their trip home, Robin Ferris and her children ran into a heavy rainstorm. Her husband, Bill, was working when his cell phone rang. It was from the hospital, saying, your family's been in a terrible accident. We need you to come right away. During the driving rain, another driver lost control of his truck, crossed the median, and slammed into the Ferris's van. The passenger of the truck was killed. Bill rushed to the hospital, not knowing what he would find. I'm praising God, calling upon him, asking him to intervene, you know, asking him to be there in the midst of all this. And, and then I'm in this next breath, I'm turning around, and as if I were talking to the devil and all his demons, I'm saying, oh, no, you don't. When Bill reached the hospital, he found that the children were fine. But he wasn't prepared to hear the doctor's report on his wife. And then they sat me down and said, now we need to talk to you about your wife. And it was, it was way too much information. It was doctor after nurse after nurse specialist. You know, saying, now let's go over her orthopedic injuries. She's, you know, had tremendous number of fractures. She's got a, a wound nine inches long on the side of her head, so she has brain injury. She had brain trauma. Robin went through emergency surgery to save her life. Mary Kay Bader was part of the trauma team that worked on Robin. She was close to death, not just because of her brain injury, but because of her ability to breathe on her own. Her heart was beating, which was a good sign, but she had a low blood pressure, as well as the uh, severe brain injury. And then she had almost 60 fractures or broken bones in her body. So I didn't get to see her till the next morning. But when I saw her, it was shocking because she was swollen up, she was bruised, they had shaved off you know, most of her hair and she had this big thing sticking out of the top of her skull to monitor her brain, you know, her intracranial pressure. This is the woman that I had been joined to for well over 20 years, and I was going to put my hands on her wherever I could find somewhere that wasn't bandaged and pray for her and watch. Robin was moved to a critical care unit. She was alive, but in a medically induced coma. The first week to two weeks after a tr severe traumatic brain injury are tenuous. The patient can die at any moment, especially if you cannot control the swelling in the brain. And based on Robin's brain injury, as well as her other injuries, we knew we had uh, a woman who had basically had every body system that was affected. Bill continued praying for his wife. Then she was slowly awakened from the coma. There was only one outcome in my mind that was acceptable, and that was her recovery. It was really hard. I think it was harder to watch her be in that much pain and awake and aware than it was harder to watch her struggle in the ICU to, to live. Dozens of broken bones had to heal. Robin also had to recover from a massive brain injury. I slept upstairs in our bedroom while she couldn't even manage stairs, so she was down in, on a hospital bed below. We had a baby monitor between her and me overnight and I could hear her on the speaker overnight you know crying in pain and and uh, you know really that still gets me uh, it was really hard Robin spent nearly three months in the hospital and rehab before going home 
through prayer, hard work, and family support, she made excellent progress. The first time I walked all the way upstairs with my walker, with my husband, with my therapist, physical therapist, and, and upstairs to the second floor of my house, I just stood there and cried. Even though it's been a slow process, Robin says she knew all along that God would heal her and she would have a good quality of life. Isaiah 41.10 is, has been my scripture, you know, fear not for I'm with you and be not dismayed for I, I will hold your right hand. And I've always felt like God had his right hand around me all the time, you know, and I, and I was hanging on as tight as I could. It's our, um, our reward to see someone back in their life uh, back engaged in and working you know towards their their dream or their goals and always moving forward and Robin has done that if you give me two patients with the same injuries and one has a family and a faith that's strong and one has nobody I can tell you who's going to wake up and who's going to make it back into their life it's the one with the family and the faith it is a miracle that she survived. A, that she survived. B, that she had all of her brain use back. That she was able to go back to school and finish her degree, go back to work, be a mom, be a wife. It's awesome to have my life back. I basically am trying to do everything all the time. We have a friend that calls her the miracle lady. And her story has inspired so many people because it was against all odds, you know. It was really against all odds that not only she survived, but that she survived with all of her abilities. I'm thankful to God for his love for me and for never letting me go and for just keeping his hands on me the whole time. Never give up. Never, never, never give up. God never lets you go. He never gives up on you. That's why prayer is so important. We want to pray for you right now. And just to encourage you in your faith, we have some answers to prayer before we begin to pray specifically for you. Gordon, this is Bonnie who lives in Wyoming, West Virginia. She fell, broke her jaw and cheekbones on the right side of her face, was in tremendous pain. Her doctor told her she'd need reconstructive surgery. Four days later, she's watching the 700 Club, and you had this word of knowledge. Someone else, you're laying your hands on the right side of your face. It's the temple area down to the cheek. God has just taken that pain away now in Jesus' name. Bonnie said she felt in her spirit that the word of knowledge was for her, and she claimed it. The pain left instantly when she saw her doctor. He said he couldn't explain it, wow. but the broken bones were healing by <laughs> themselves, and there was no need for surgery. Hallelujah. That's a huge miracle. That is fabulous. That is, yeah. Wow, well, praise God. Here's another huge miracle. Julie from Washington. All miracles are huge. I should. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Julie from Washington ruptured two discs in her lower back. She had physical therapy for five months, but got no relief from the pain. Her doctor then recommended surgery. Instead, Julie believed God. Then, while watching the 700 Club, she heard this word of knowledge from Terry. Someone else, you have a slip, slip disc, lots of pain in your back. God's healing you, literally moving everything back into place, even putting the cushion in there that needs to be there to stop the pain. Well, Julie placed a hand on her lower back. At that moment, it felt like someone was putting hands on her neck and making an adjustment. The pain in her back immediately left and hasn't returned. Praise that God. is a big miracle. That can happen to you. That can happen to you. All, what, what does it take? Um, you know, we, we sometimes get complicated with healing, and we sometimes get sort of spooky with it, mysterious. It's real simple. Believe God. Believe God. He sent his word and healed your disease. You know, that, that, it, it doesn't get any simpler than that. He sends his word. Who is the word? Well, it's Jesus. When you receive him, you receive the healer. And the amazing thing is, he wants to heal. You don't have to convince him. Now, start thinking about what it's like in heaven. Is anybody sick? Anybody in pain? Anybody in need? No. Well, now we know what God's will is. If that's what it's like in heaven, that's God's will. And Jesus tells us to pray this, to pray that God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's what Jesus came to do. He came to express God's will on earth and destroy all the works of the devil.
all of them. He wants to take away pain, illness, disease, suffering, lack. He wants to take it away, all of it, all sin, even the memory of sin. He wants to take it all away. Now, all we have to do is believe that and receive that. And when we do, we get our miracle. Now, in an act of faith, lay your hands on that area of the body that needs healing. The people around you, ask them to come join. And we'll claim this great verse from Mark 16. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So we're going to believe. We're going to lay hands, we're going to agree, and we're going to let Jesus do all the rest. Pray with us. Lord God, we just lift the needs of the audience to you right now. And as people are laying hands on that area of the body that needs healing, we join with them. And we join in agreement and in belief in you. And we just declare that we are in you, and you are in us, all our sins have been forgiven and taken away. All our diseases, all our infirmities, all our pain have been borne by you. And if you've borne them, we don't have to bear them anymore. So in Jesus' name, be healed. There's someone you're taking your left hand and you're laying it on your, the lower part of your neck. You've got pain that goes down your spine and... It's like throughout, but it's centered right where your hand is. In Jesus' name, be healed. All that pain leave now. Turn your neck, turn to the left and to the right, and realize you're healed. You're healed. It's amazing what's happened to you. You are absolutely, totally healed. No more pain from this day forward. Terry, what There's someone else. You have, um, you have struggled just recently with a lot of mental confusion. It's not like you're forgetting things. I mean, it's, it's really life interrupting. And it's some kind of a chemical imbalance. God's setting that straight for you right now. You're just going to feel like a warmth come over you and you're not going to have that experience again. And someone else, you've been in some kind of an accident that's uh, left you with some odd paralysis. You have like a, a, like a claw foot and a claw hand and, and those tendons are all messed up. God's just releasing that for you. Just begin to stretch out muscle that you haven't even used before. You're going to find that will all come back. Um, someone, you've had a broken nose, and it's unusual because the break is at the uh, point where the nose uh, meets your eyebrow, and uh, there's a hole there. And God is able to fill that in and heal that for you and give you a normal sinus function. In Jesus' name. Yes, and someone else, you're a singer, and you've had a, some kind of a chronic condition. It's left your voice very raspy feeling, and um, God's healing that condition for you completely. You're going to have a full range back. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for what you're doing in the world today. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've been touched by God, we want to share in your good report. So give us a call, 1-800-759-0700. We always rejoice in what God is doing in the world today. We leave you with these words from 2 Kings. Thus says the Lord, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. Hi, I'm Terry Mewson. I'd like to tell you about Orphan's Promise. Orphan's Promise helps children who've had tragic beginnings in life. My father died. My mother started drinking and gave me away to the orphanage. We were homeless, and she made me beg for food. We don't know where our sister is. I'm looking for her now. We want to return to be with our mother, but she doesn't want us. In many countries, children are turned out of orphanages when they turn 16. They lose the only security they've ever known. Many will become easy prey for prostitution rings and criminal gangs. Together, you and I can break this cycle for these kids. For just $20 a month, you'll provide computer training, life skills, and people that care, preparing them for a future of hope. Show them God's love. Call the number on your screen right now and say you'll help.